So here's what I'd like to share now. Let's remember, guys, God first. Not teacher first, God first. Anything that seems contrary to that, we should bring to the light. God is the light that created all things. We're made in God's image, so we too are the light. But we're not the creator of the light. We are the light the creator created. Now, imagine this. Bring everything to the light. There was this spiritual teacher who was wonderful, had great integrity. And for some reason, you know, had this majorly successful, one of the most successful in the top five in the country, spiritual centers. And something went a little weird. Um, a lot of money was disappearing. And you know that's got to be them. That's the assumption people make. Uh-oh, another one of them. Spiritual, religious leaders, whatever, taking all the money. The money did disappear. Turns out her husband had taken it. And he was mentally unstable. And that was figured out and, you know, and all that and exposed. And the money was taken and it was his responsibility. She was, you know... Uh, washed clean of all responsibility. But you know what she did? She, besides a divorce, and he went to jail, she stepped up and said, I'm going to pay back his debt because I should have seen it. She wasn't responsible, but she stepped up anyway. That's incredible, don't you think? Like you don't hear that from most of the other like televangelists and other preachers, teachers that end up getting caught stealing money or whatever. They barely even own that they've done it, let alone make up for it. But do you know on the internet there's still people talking about how dare she? You see what I'm saying? It's a sad thing because the human race fears God. They do. They fear God. And they can't believe that anybody can be that clean. So they've got to try to find fault and take it all down. So as much as we say we love God, which we do, there's a part of us that also keeps looking for faults and flaws so that we don't have too spiritual of a life. It can't be that good. There's got to be a fault here and a flaw there. So what I'm saying in part is anytime you have any issue, bring it to the light. And that teacher who I just talked about was very known for saying that. She would go on the stage and say, ask away. How many of us do that? Just boom, here I am. Open the garments, here I am. What do you want? Well, is it true? Yes. Is it true? Yep. Is it true? Nope. Just, she said, and she has a saying, bring it to the light. Bring it all to the light. Now, I'm not saying you have to go to your families yet and say, all right, here I am. What do you want to know? Go to your partners if you ever thought thoughts or took actions that weren't so sweet. Honey, I got to tell you, you know, here I am. I'm not saying you do all that yet, but do it with yourself in front of a mirror, perhaps. At least your own confession in your private space. Say, here I am. Bring it all to the light. You'll find that you're not condemned in the light. You'll be afraid to bring it to the light. You'll be hesitant because you got, you know, we were told there's going to be a lightning bolt coming down any minute. But there was, it just always reminds me, there was a great, if you ever seen the TV show, I Love Lucy, there was this one moment where Lucy is talking to Ricky, and as usual, she's some, done something wrong. And she doesn't want to admit it, doesn't want him to know. And she says, you know, you see her say, no, Ricky, I swear. May God strike me dead if I've done it. And then she goes, <laughs> like it might actually happen. <laughs> so the great teachers, for example, Krishna, the mythology of Christ before he becomes Christ. Krishna, Krishna consciousness, Christ consciousness. Krishna and Jesus both explained to us, they both said, I am the light in this world. When we hear some Christians saying, um, Jesus is God, it's kind of an incorrect statement because they think God actually put up a gone fishing sign in heaven and came to earth. Because they don't understand when they said, his name shall be Emmanuel, you know, that time of the year, he's born in Bethlehem, and all, <laughs> um, when he's born in Bethlehem, it, his name, he shall be called, the prophecies of old said, he shall be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That's exactly what Krishna said. I am God here. That's exactly what Jesus embodied. So these great teachers explained to us, taught us, I am the light of God. They were both commonly misinterpreted in their teachings, whether it's 
ancient teachings of Krishna or more modern, semi-modern with Jesus. But they both said, do yoga. They said it in different words, but they both said do yoga. They didn't mean asanas and such. Yoga means to yoke yourself to God. So Jesus and Krishna both said, connect to God. Stay to God. Stay connected to God. Tether yourself to God. Bring all things to the light. When you're afraid, bring it to the light. When you're doubtful, bring it to the light. When you're being gossiped about or you're gossiping, stop. Keep bringing things to the light. Start every day bringing yourself to the light. So think about this as a, as a romantic thing for just a second. Think about anyone that you've ever loved, felt like you loved. Think about how you felt. Often we think, I can't wait to see them again, yes or no? Can't wait to speak to them again, yes or no? What about when you could trust them to confide and get some support, yes or no? Have you ever had somebody in your life like that? Good. So imagine if that's an expression of love, human love, what is it like to have an experience? What if God loves us? Don't you think that God says, I can't wait to see you again? I can't wait to talk to you again. I can't wait for you to confide in me again. Just picture it on that level. God's saying, don't run and hide from me. And don't be so self-absorbed and thinking you don't need any help. You have no idea how messed up you are. <clears throat> well, no, I'm doing pretty good. I mean, look, that my checkbook's still in the plus. The doctor reports still say this. Wait a couple more years. The doctor reports, they start to decline eventually. The pocketbook, oh, I had an investment and somebody misled me. So why wait till the things go wrong? Why aren't we so excited to meet the lover called God when things are going well? So there is some very important teaching that says, well, you know, I wonder why we pray sometimes and things seem to happen. Pray other times, <clears throat> and all too often, stuff doesn't go well. There's a very deep teaching that <clears throat> most of us may not have heard, especially in the New Age community, where Christ or Krishna or God is saying, I'm always with you, but you're not going to feel me sometimes because you seem to be the type of person that when everything's kind of okay, you, you really don't call anymore. You know, you've heard that before. You seem to call only when you want something. Like we have felt maybe from our kids or our parents felt about us. You only seem to call when you want something. You only seem to show up at work on time when you want to raise. That's a human condition. What we're being told, however, is this. Imagine God in any form, by any name. Imagine God saying, sometimes I don't come rolling in at the first moment you clasp your hands together to pray. Sometimes I don't. And here's one reason. Because I want you to seek me. I want you to stay in the light. I want you to bring things to the light. Don't do it on a convenient basis. Live in the light. And when things don't come to you right away, don't think I'm not there. I'm actually doing this. I'm actually, just it, it's figurative partly, imagine that I'm holding it back a little so that you can come closer to me. Don't keep asking God to come to your world and change your world. Why don't you step up to heaven? Why don't we step up into a higher consciousness? See, so every time we're asking for our lives to be fixed, if God fixes them, the search for God stops most of the time. God in its infinite love and compassion and wisdom says, I'm going to, here's your gift, but I'm going to put it over here instead of over there. I'm going to put it a little further from you. Why? Because when you come to it, you're becoming more like God. And we're saying, I'll make you a deal. I hear what you're saying, God, but I'll make you a deal. I'll become more spiritual if you bring more stuff to me. And God's saying, you don't understand how this works. I cannot, will not come and enable your thoughts of what you think you need. I already know what you need. You mean you know about the new car I want? No. You mean you know about the cure of a disease? I, no, that's not what I mean. Well, what does God mean? If it says God knows our needs, doesn't it mean our stuff? No. Because if 
you're one with God, all needs would disappear. It would be impossible to be one with God and still need new tires on your car. Because even if you lived in the world like Jesus or Krishna, you would materialize him because he would say, I am Emmanuel. I am God on earth. If I see that, you know, treads are worn, I can just in a thought say, not today, and they're fixed. And the fixing can come from they materialize new tires, believe it or not, or it can come from someone gifting them or whatever it happens to be. Instantaneous miracles are something that are supposed to be natural. And we're asking God to make them happen. And what I'm saying is the other way around. Stop asking God to bring the, its light to you and instead step up into the light. Because in the real light, nothing else is happening. No problems. Do you see what I'm saying there? There's a subtle enabling and game playing. They're both beautiful. God, I'm here. Be with me. Fill my mind, my heart, my soul. Those are beautiful words. God, fill every cell of my being. Those are good words. They are. They're beautiful. But there's a slight distinction. Instead of telling God what to fill, and it's okay to say it. Fill my mind, my heart, my soul, my body. Cells, fill my life. It's a good affirmation. And God's saying, okay, I'll do that. Here you go. Done? Good. Feel better? Good. Tomorrow, I'm going to ask you to come to me. No, no, I'm busy. With issues I'm going to probably pray about three days from now. And God's saying, if you would spend more time in my light, you would become more divine and you wouldn't have as much to pray about in terms of needs. So that's part of the message today. There's going to be the, the false stories, the false gurus. Come to me, I'll teach you this. And that. This one teacher in, in town, one of the nuttiest things was that they said on record, there's like, uh, you know, how spiritual are you? Oh, well, there's eight levels of spirituality. Jesus was a four and I'm an eight. And I'm thinking, really? Seriously? Have you walked on water lately? Like, what is it? What number is the walking on water? There? I mean, have you raised from the dead? I mean, come on. And the ego happily raises itself above the truth of what God is. So let's not buy into that. Let's not play into that. So instead, come to me. Now, now I'm a false prophet. False prophet doesn't just mean what I'm saying is not true. All the false prophets are the people that are in it for the money or to make it about them as though they are God. Listen to the teachers that introduce you to God. Listen to the teachers that say, it's not about getting life to go your way. Which is a weird thing to say. Because most systems in the New Age community are all about how to make your life better. There are churches out there that make lots of money, lots of success, lots of attendees, because they'll say, when you attend here, we're going to teach you skills on how to manifest a new car. And there's lots of new cars in the parking lot. So people are like, I want some of that. But as so many people have said, I think it was just today somebody put a post uh, uh, on my Friends of Michael Murdad Facebook page about Jim Carrey, saying, I wish all the actors could reach success like I did and have all the money they could ever want so they could realize it's worthless and more quickly seek God. <coughs> That's fantastic. Weird affirmation. Listen, I wish you all success that you, so that you can fail. It's a weird affirmation, but what it means is so you could collapse into the truth. Everything we think we're looking for. If I'm a new age teacher, guys, my popularity, and I'm, I'm pretty well known, I could... I could quadruple it if I started promising people that they're going to find their soulmates. But I tell you instead, you better find yourself first. And people are like, no, I wanted my soulmate. I could do a lot better if I could tell people, prosperity, it's coming. We're going to manifest the lottery for you. They're all going to be there. When I say instead, don't look for the quick ka -ching. Keep improving your consciousness of prosperity so that it's real, not a winning, but a real thing. It's your consciousness. And, you know, that's not what people want to hear. If people heard, we're going to have miracles. Come up here, I'll wave my hand, and then you'll feel healed and all that. That's fantastic. It brings a lot of people looking for miracle cures. But how many of them want to know what, what caused it? How many of them want to know why they had the illness? 
You don't see that usually on the televangelist shows. Listen, it's you're holding this inner grief, this resentment, this regret. We let's work on it. There's no spiritual counseling. If the ones that, that are, if you know, the ones that are seemingly authentic, they're waving the hands, people can walk, and everybody loves that. And they hand their money over and their time and their devotion. We're being asked by God, what if we don't cure you? And what if we don't promise you the lottery? Is that a spirituality you want to become part of? Most people, no. But what if the one saying this says, and the reason I'm doing this is so that you'll become more like me, and then it'll all come to you. That seems like a longer process. Because when I think about it, I'm relatively messed up. So by the time I work on myself and get to spiritual, I mean, I'd be dead anyway, and on the other side. So it doesn't sound like a, a really, you know, good prospect. Everybody wants the quick fix, and that's where the false prophets, that's why they show up. The false prophets are just dangling the sparkly stuff because they see you're vulnerable. They see you're susceptible. So what if we now let, why don't we just retire them all? Retire everything, our perceptions of it. The doctors, the medical world cannot fix you. It cannot. The world that keeps promising things, it cannot do those things. So we need a different tactic here, guys. And... Let's back to God. Bring it to the light. God, I thought, I'm confused. Do I need surgery? Do I not need surgery? I don't know what to do. The doctors say yes. My friends say, oh no, that's not organic enough. So I got my friends shaming me and the doctors, you know, scaring me. What do I do? Bring it to God and say, I don't know. Don't say, God, you know, just in case you don't know, the latest studies say, say, I don't know. God will guide us on everything in everything, every topic, but bring the I don't know. Last night, um, <clears throat> I remember I stood up in my office and I looked at the clock and it was, I think, 1233. Mm -hmm. These double digits, man, they just keep happening. But another story. But I stood up and it was, what I did was I stood up and I had a quick decision to make. And what I said was, I don't know. What would you want me to do? What I need to do is, I don't know, and clear my mind. Not, not the proverbial, um, listen, God, you know, if I look down, see that I still have hands, then I'll know that you want me to do this thing that I really want to do. You're, 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 you know, you're loading the deck. A lot of people do this. The famous story I've shared where the guy who says, I'm going on a diet, and I'm really going to do it right this time. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get healthy. I want to clear my life up. And then next day he wakes up. Oh, man, I am craving a donut. So it's like, okay, should I, shouldn't I? Should I, shouldn't I? God, what would you want? Like God's going, oh, I'd get the donut. You know, <laughs> God, <clears throat> what would you want me to do, Lord? And here's what the guy does, because this is what the spiritual new age people would do. The guy says, I'm not going to let myself create the getting the donut. No way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, God, I'm just going to go for a drive. God, he goes for a drive and he happens to notice he's near the donut store, but he's not giving in because that would be ego and he's spiritual, new agey. So he says, all right, you know what? Drives around the block a couple times. And then he says, that's it. I'm fed up with this game of my ego mind. I want to know only God's will. So God, I'm going to pull into the parking lot, and if there's not a parking spot in front of the donut store, I'll know I'm not supposed to get the donut. But if there's a parking spot that's open, I'll know it's your will. But guys, all this time, our mind is creating what we want out of this. We're so good at messing around with the world and reality. You know, so it creates the parking spot. Oh, look, God, it's God's will. It's not me. So we have to be careful. So as last night when I'm standing, I stood up. I closed my eyes and sort of just the symbolic looking to the heavens and I could see my mind can say yes, my mind can say no. Which one is right? Neither. Empty. Empty the thoughts. I do not know. And then there's thoughts I have and I start to laugh going, well, that's still me. You know, you have to move through all the usual thoughts and stuff to the place of I don't know. There's these patterns that we have of sabotaging our guidance. And, you know, this was just a simple decision. And I said, well, as simple as it is, 
I still don't know. It could be, should I get some water? Maybe I'm dehydrated. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I should do this. Maybe the doctor would say, stop. Let it all go. And I waited. And I, and I actually had closed my eyes. It was 12 something and I stood there for a bit. <clears throat> I opened my eyes and I looked and that's when I saw 1233. And I knew the 33 in this case could symbolize something. But I still said, but the 33, double numbers are happening all the time. So here I struggled with still not sure. And here's what came to me. When you're not sure, Michael, always do the next right thing. Mm -hmm. So breathe that in for a second. Always, when in doubt, always do the next right thing. What is the most loving thing I can be doing right now? I need to know if it could be, it could be should I get a glass of water? What does that have to do with the next right thing? Well, think about it. The next right thing on a practical level is water a loving thing you can give to yourself? Yes. The question's done. Get a glass of water. If you made the wrong decision, let's pretend for a second, if there's such a thing, here's what's going to happen. Spirit now knows that you take this seriously and will help you even more to get clearer and clearer answers. When you can prove that I'm going to get guidance and what I hear, I'm going to act on it, not only your inner self, but all the beings around that support our decision making. They say, this person takes action when they know it's right. And they'll more and more start to make, even from mistakes, the actions will more and more become right. Your decisions will more and more become right. So think in terms of how can I bring everything to the light of God? Don't hold anything back. Leave no stone unturned. And even if it's in the quiet recesses of your own room, God, the light of God. God, I have shames about my body. God, I have shame about, I have regrets about this. I have doubts, I have fears. I wonder if it's greedy for me to want to raise at work. All of it, bring it to God. Because the, it's, God is not actually going to look at the stuff and try to fix it. God is going to just be what it is, which is light. And when you have light, the dark spots disappear. So don't look for thunderous voices giving you guidance. Try to set aside the stuff of the world and let guidance just come in the form of, I feel different. I was struggling, I was confused, and now I don't feel confused. The light of God just dissipates. If it's a foggy day and the light of the sun burns through the fog, the tree is still there, the pond is still there outside. But sometimes in the dark or in the fog, you didn't see that mountain over there. The light of God is going to expose things that were there all the time, but I couldn't see them when I was messed up with my foggy thoughts. Is that all making sense? So much to choose from, but I'll say this much, man, humility. Whether you're spiritual teachers, if we knew who we really are, we wouldn't even create these false prophets and people to gossip about. Just drop all that silliness. And I also don't dig the people that are hating them and gossiping about them. It's ridiculous. All it is is hate, hating, hate. Love loves love. Remember I've said that before? God is love and love loves love. There's a part of us that is made in God's image and it's perfectly loved. All else, when the light shines, dissipates. And we're standing around telling God which pieces to fix and how and when. Just step into the light. And if you still don't know what that means, that's good. Say, I don't know. Show me. Let the light of God guide. One of the big messages of Krishna was, tether yourself to God even if you're a soldier in war, and people in Sedona get all weird about that kind of an analogy. Oh, that's just so violent. War, we're spiritual. We don't believe in that. That messes up my aura to even say the word war. You know? All right, fine. Bring that to the light of God. Because hidden behind it are always our own issues. But, but believe it or not, there are soldiers out there in a war who are capable of being just as spiritual as someone sitting in a spiritual center in Sedona. You cannot say it, it cannot happen. Anywhere someone chooses it, and Krishna taught that, bring God into the battlefield, meaning also into the courtroom, meaning also you can be laying on your death's bed or sick and wish you weren't sick and that this disease would go away. I know that. I mean, we all, come on. 
If you have a child that's dying, who wouldn't say, God, please heal my child? Who would? I mean, that's normal. But we're supposed to be asking, God, despite my child dying, despite my being sick, despite my being in the middle of a battlefield, off in the Middle East somewhere, be with me. Help me to feel your presence everywhere that I am. Help me to see your presence in my child even if it dies. No, no, no. I want you to fix my child is a human prayer. The spiritual prayer is, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The human part of me wants to say, please, God. You know, which then implies that God's the one killing it. Please don't. And it's not. We're supposed to say, help me to see my child as you see it. Help me to see your holiness in that child. Help me to not think that when a leaf falls off the tree, certain seasons, that the leaf is bad or sick. To everything, there is a season. Remember the birds song? It's also from the Bible. To everything, there is a season. So the child doing what it's doing, it, it's a test for me. Can I still see God despite this thing? If you can say yes at the end of the day, you've become a mystic today. If you say, no, I cannot, you're human. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you're human. But I would say, well, I kind of didn't get it, did I? But then I would say, I am committing to do better in tomorrow's tests. Car ran out of gas. Dang it, that's not supposed to happen. But it did. Now what? God be with me. Be with me on the side of the road while I got an empty tank of gas. Be with me while I buy a car. Be with me while I pick a place to get new tires. Be with me while I make my cereal this morning or whatever it is. Be with me in all things. And we say, you know, I'll give thanks once those things show up. And that's not actually how this works. If you actually knew who you were, which is what God wants. If you knew who you were, you would give thanks in advance for things because you would know it's impossible for the things to not come once I center into who I am. When we say, well, I'll give thanks, I'll try to remember later, that means you actually are affirming you're already doubting that it might or might not happen. Bring everything to the light of God. The light of God is perfect. It's whole. It's love. And it's strange wording for some people. I don't need to bring it to God. That's old school. I know how to manifest. And like Jim Carrey was saying in his talk there, I wish they all could get what they want so that they realize they're still hollow inside. Because what you're asking for has nothing to do with filling your soul. And that's what we ultimately want and need. Our soul filled. Let's take a, a few centering breaths. <clears throat> As we're centering in, bring everything to the light of God. And realizing that this is practical, it changes who we are. If we're living in the light of God, man, we give. We give consistently. We give all that we are. If we have a great smile, we smile. If we're uplifting, then we uplift people. Bring everything to the light of God. But don't think that you walk away from that light. You grab hold of it and you take it wherever you go. That's the job. And that's the hard part. Some people don't know how to connect with the light. But some do. But the harder test is taking the light with you into the world. The world is not waiting for you to go into the light and stand in the light of God in your meditations. That doesn't do any much, doesn't do much for the world compared to you coming back from being in the light and bringing the light to us. So bring it in the form of prosperity, pay things forward in check stands, gift people. When you see people in, in lack or need, my God, hug them, hold them, or take their hand. Whatever you do, body work, sometimes just put your hands on people and, and not have it in a therapeutic environment where you charge them, clinical environment. Sometimes just lay on of hands, man, the shoulders. Let people know you care. Children are very sensitive. 
When you see them and you smile, one smile, you can download all kinds of love and they'll pick it up. Don't worry about how they respond. Download love to everyone, everywhere that you can. And I'm saying only what you can. If you go beyond what you believe you can do, that's rescuing and enabling. It's rescuing. It's unhealthy. Instead, what can I do today? God, what would you have me do? Let's imagine then for a moment, we release our heads from thinking right now. Try and close your eyes. Try and let go of the outside world having to, to keep the eyes open, having to think. Those are all subtle techniques of keeping in control. Let it go. Of myself, I am nothing. And we drop the thoughts of the world and the body, and we try to imagine instead this beautiful golden presence above above your room, above yourself, or in the heavens, beautiful golden light, the presence of God. And it shines upon all things unconditionally. This light shines, and the only time something could be in the dark is when someone's trying to shield the light from shining upon it. Here I am, God. Shine upon me. Teach me how to be a righteous, meaning right consciousness person. Shine your light upon me. Wash away all the stuff of my regrets and doubts and fears. Let me unfold and become what you've created me to be. I choose not to be a false prophet to others or myself. Limited teaching, selfish stuff. I just choose to drop it all and stand in your light. And this light is active. It's passive in that it just is, but it's also active in that it says, I love you. I am the light. When Moses hears, I am that I am, it's just also, it's I am that light. And I'm shining upon you. And it downloads understanding. It downloads love. Love is healing. It actually heals the cells of my body. It's active. Light is transforming cells and genetics. It washes clean all things of the past, all things of the human self, and brings us back to purity. To be a virgin means to be pure. And in our souls, we're all pure. Virgin, not the experiences of this world. They're all washing away. Let go of the mind. Hear the background music. Centered in the light, let it become a complete experience inside and out. The light of God speaks to us all through the day and it says, I love you. Let me lead. 
let me show you. I am not the false prophet. I will not take your power. I'm going to give you your power. All you need to do is step in to the truth of who you are and everything unfolds. Your body, soul becomes aligned and it rises into the heavens and you become pure spirit. I am your guide. I am your counselor. I am your father. I am your mother. I am your brother, your sister. I am everything you ever sought. I'm the answer, the solution. Let me be the miracles you look for. But instead of asking me to come to your level, trust me enough to lift you to mine. Let go of your thoughts that you're unworthy of such and let me lift you. So much love for you. When I said, said, no soul shall perish, I meant, I meant that nothing has the power to harm you. And as we're coming to a close, imagine absorbing the light that shines upon you. Go into the idea of absorbing it into every gland, chakra, meridian, cell, you're going to the light and absorbing it. I have no part of me that I choose to leave under the rocks, sheltered from the light. Here I am, God. Here I am. Shine your light into every particle of my being. And there is no effort to this because I choose nothing but the light of God. I am moving out of the way. And as I become this light, one with this light, I realize I'm experiencing the second coming of Christ, where I remember who I am. And we close with just a visual. Plant permanently a visual in your mind. Have you ever seen those pictures of Krishna with a light glowing in his third eye or his heart? He has this smile on his face, completely content. He could be riding on a chariot and he's got this smile. Picture yourself like that. Despite whatever your life circumstances are, picture yourself with this light. Krishna consciousness, the glow of a halo around his head as in most art depictions. Picture that presence of the Divine Mother, glowing aura and love for all her children because she's the Universal Mother. Picturing the presence of Jesus who can stand and say, be still to a storm. That's not him, that's us. Be still to the storms. Be still to the stuff of the world. You have no power over me. Be still and know. As I stand in this light, I can say, be still and know I am God. And watch the stuff of the world just fall away. Watch the seas part. Watch the, the dead come back to life. And then we close with a sense of gratitude. Do believe that what you're thinking, feeling, visualizing is happening and feel a sense of gratitude. And so it is. Good. Thank you. So take a moment to sort of stretch and integrate. <clears throat> and I pray today made sense. One thing that I really want to make clear because of the types of topics we've been having, connection to God and living in the light of God, 
I, I just, please, when you leave today, keep it with you that the little tyrant inside that thinks it's praying is still asking for what it wants. And that's okay. That's better than not praying. <clears throat> but there's another way. St. Paul, a teacher of God, right? Did a lot of miracles. Hold, guys. Hold. You don't have to rush to donations yet. Relax. But St. Paul, who's a spiritual teacher, major figure in the Bible. And there's one point that you don't hear very often where he says, I've gone to Jesus three times asking him to help me with something that's afflicting me. If you, you know, it's like, this is Paul. I have done some things for you. A little favor. And Jesus would only answer him. Something along the lines, let my grace be enough. What's he saying there? You won't always get things you fix the way you want them. And the more you want it, sometimes the more distanced you'll be from it. Because I want you to come to me. So picture this. You're saying to Jesus or God or whatever, I want this. What does God mean when it says, let my grace be enough? Come and stand in my light and it'll be enough. He's not saying, well, I'll give you grace instead of healing, which is how some Christians interpret that. And that has some validity, I understand. But think about this. Anything you ask for, let my grace be enough. When you realize who you are and you stand in the light of God, it will be enough and your needs will be taken care of, is what it means. But if you're one of those people that says, I pray, I ask, answers don't come. I'm just saying, there's an example. St. Paul saying, yeah, I did that too. I was kind of ticked off too. Confused, feeling a little sad, bummed. Really confused because, I mean, he's kind of doing all this good work. But it was a calling. Don't stand down there asking me to fix your stuff. Let my presence be enough. Come to me and it'll all be healed. Is that making sense? Yes. All right.